Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is five clear mandates. Last week, we followed Jesus as he chose 12 apostles for special training. In Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, we learned that Jesus gave power and authority to the apostles to heal the sick and to cast out demons. He transitioned them from watching him heal the sick to empowering them to heal. This is how Luke introduces this transition to us. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Jesus called the twelve together, and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. <clears throat> what a radical shift. From this moment forward, it was not just Jesus who healed people. All 12 of his apostles were given power and authority to heal the sick, just like Jesus did. We noted that Jesus did not send them out to pray for the sick. They were given power and authority to cure the sick. There is a big difference between praying and curing. It was easy for them to believe in Jesus because when he spoke, miracles happened. Jesus made it look easy. Now the disciples believed, needed to believe not only in Jesus, they needed to believe that Jesus was willing to use them to heal people. First, Jesus modeled healing. Then Jesus gave power and authority to the 12 apostles to model healing. And that was just the beginning of Jesus' plan, not the end. Next, he released power and authority to 72 more disciples to do exactly what the 12 had been empowered to do. From the 72, power and authority was given to every new believer who became a follower of Jesus. <clears throat> In giving the Great Commission, Jesus instructed the disciples to teach them to obey everything that I commanded you to do, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. Uh, Jesus instructed the apostles to teach all the new disciples to do everything that he had taught them to do. Nothing was to be left out. Jesus said, what I can do, you can do. And what you can do, all the new followers of Jesus can do. Uh, learning to heal is a mandate given to every follower of Jesus. Mandates are expectations. Jesus made clear to his disciples what he expected them to do. And today we are considering the question, what kind of disciples do we want to make? What are these mandates that Jesus spoke about? The answer to that question varies widely depending on the views of the person that we are talking to. However, if we ask Jesus the question, we would receive a very clear answer. Jesus wants all of his disciples to walk in the same power and authority that he gave to the apostles. This is how Matthew explained it. As you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons, freely you have received, and freely give. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Disciples are people walking in power and authority, carrying five clear mandates that Jesus gave to every believer. Disciples are not people who know a lot about Jesus. Disciples are followers of Jesus who can do what Jesus did. Jesus gave us a clear mission with a clear focus. Preach the kingdom, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Well, what is this first mandate? What is preaching? This is illustrated so clearly for us by the man from Gadara. He is an example to us of what it means to carry the kingdom message without any formal training. Jesus gave him this instruction. 
Luke chapter 8 and verse 39. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming through the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Preaching is sharing your experience with what God has done for you. It does not require a special platform or a title. Kingdom preachers focus on what Jesus has done for them. Your encounter with Jesus is enough to draw people to him and come to know him the way you do. The second mandate Jesus gave us is healing the sick. <clears throat> Uh, Jesus said uh, to us, he didn't ask us to pray for the sick. He said, heal the sick. He commanded us to heal the sick. We have delegated authority to command disease to go. Say to diseases what Jesus said to diseases. At first, you will most likely feel uncomfortable speaking directly to a disease. But over time, you will become more comfortable doing what Jesus has invited us to do. Take authority over disease by speaking to them, just like Jesus did. This is what he modeled for the disciples to do, and what he has modeled for us to do. <clears throat> you might feel like it is not your place to speak directly to a disease, but Jesus will not feel that way about you. He will take delight in you exercising faith to believe that he is willing to heal through you. One night I heard the audible voice of Jesus say to me, I'm willing to heal through you. It was a very powerful encounter. I knew immediately that it was not a special gift of healing that I was receiving. I was merely receiving confirmation on what Jesus had already commanded me to do. Speaking words of healing is much more than a gift. It is walking in obedience to the commandment that Jesus has given to us. The third mandate Jesus gave is to raise the dead. Now there are more than 10 stories in the Bible about dead people being raised to life. And there are many, many more stories about people living in deadness who, are being, who have been restored to living in vitality and life. As I travel around the world, I've listened to many stories of people being raised from the dead. I've spoken with people who were dead and who are now alive. And I have spoken with people who have raised the dead. Raising the dead is not any more difficult than healing the sick. The power to heal the sick or to raise the dead all comes from Jesus. And when Jesus needs you to raise someone from the dead... He will put the words in your life, the words of life into your mouth that you need to say. <clears throat> the fourth mandate Jesus gave is to cleanse the lepers. A cleansing lepers represent healing what doctors refer to as incurable diseases. Healing is more than, uh, cleansing is more than healing. When doctors say that word cancer, fear, is often the first response in the lives of those who hear. Incurable diseases carry an emotional response. And healing incurable diseases requires more than physical healing. Emotional healing is needed at the same time. Ministering to why questions and feelings of anger is frequently the first step towards physical healing. Well, I invite you to join me in praying against uh, some of the top incurable diseases, Ebola, enterovirus, cancers, AIDS, all the COVID variants that have killed so many people, all diseases that doctors say are incurable. Jesus can cure every single disease. He is such an amazing and powerful person, and he wants to use you to heal people with incurable diseases. The fifth mandate that Jesus gave to us is to cast out demons. Uh, demons are fallen angels who live to manifest their hatred towards God. 
They do so primarily by attempting to take control over the thinking and the behavior of people. The English Bible uses two words to describe the activity of demons in the lives of people. We either read that a person was oppressed or possessed by a demon. However, there's only one Greek word behind these two English words, and that word is dionysomai. It simply means to be demonized. The question is not whether the demon is inside or on the outside. The question is, is demonic activity present in the person's thinking and in their behavior? Either our behavior reflects the presence of Jesus in our lives or it does not. And any time behavior does not reflect the presence of Jesus, some other presence is being manifested. Uh, Jesus gave us authority over that presence that does not manifest the glory of God. It is our blessing to command a foul presence uh, to depart. Now, frequently, Jesus was confronted by demons, and with power and authority, he commanded them to be silent, and he drove them away. Now, followers of Jesus have been given the same authority and power to drive away demons. As followers of Jesus, then, we have the privilege of doing all five of these clear mandates. Uh, the power does not come from me, uh, but it flows through me. Uh, people have been healed and set free. And I've had the privilege of moving in all five of these mandates. You too can have the joy in, of, of walking in power and moving in these mandates. You can do what the apostles and the disciples of Jesus did. This is what they did. They departed and went through the villages preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Luke chapter 9 and verse 6. The 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. Jesus said the reason demons are subject to our names is because our name are written in the book of heaven. And Jesus said the greatest reason to rejoice is that we can minister with power and authority because our names are written in the book of heaven. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Let's take a few moments and pray and ask God to help you understand these mandates and embrace them, that we'll learn how to preach the kingdom message, that you'll learn how to share what great things God has done for you, Maybe you don't feel like your life is that marvelous and you don't have powerful things to tell. Just keep telling your story. Your story is more powerful than you realize. And the longer you encounter God, the more powerful stories you will have to tell. I, I encourage you to trust God. Don't make up stuff. Just share your story and God will use you uh, to bring people into his kingdom. I open your eyes to see that you can heal the sick. It's just your words. Jesus will not think that you are taking over his place. He wants you to use your word, to use your tongue, to use your mouth, and to say the things that he would say. When a moment arises and you come a stumble across an accident or something happens and a young life is snuffed out, just ask God to give you the words to say and you'll have the joy of raising someone from the dead. And when you hear about someone who has an, a terminal disease, ask the Spirit of God to give you faith to believe that that disease can be healed. Whatever foul spirits are contaminating people, we authorize and empower you to drive them out in the name of powerful name of Jesus and to set people free. Whatever it is that you have that is going on in your life, we speak healing over you today, that God would give you the joy of wherever you go, wherever you are, offer healing to people, because healing is to take place everywhere, especially outside of churches. And so may God use you this week uh, to touch people's lives and to heal them uh, from diseases that are even incurable by the power of Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. 
If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.